Okay, it's five after five. I think we'll we'll get started. Welcome to everyone who's taken some time to join us this evening for the first of four sub-regional budget 2021 meeting, public meetings. Uh, my name is Chris Schumacher. I'm the manager of communications and engagement for the Cache Valley Regional District. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to acknowledge that we're uh, joining each other here today from uh, across the traditional unceded territory of the Coast Salish people. Uh, I'd like to first start by introducing our panelists that are here with us today. There's a number of us uh, here. I'll start with our, our staff. We have Talitha Soldera, who's our uh, assistant manager of finance and will be uh, leading the presentation this evening. We have Natalie Weiner, who is our uh, manager of finance and our chief financial officer for the CVRD. We have Mark Heber, who is our general manager of corporate services. And we have Brian Carruthers, our CAO. Uh, we also have a whole number of our elected officials from our board of directors here. Uh, in no particular order, I'd like to welcome Director Allison Nicholson from Area E, uh, Director Ben Martman from Area H, Director Salmon uh, from Area A, Director Toporowski from the Municipality of North Cowichan, Director Morrison from Area F, Director Kuhn from Area I, Director Yanni DiNardo from Area D, Director Smith from Area G, Director Wilson from Area C, and Director McGonagall from Lake Cowichan. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, and also thank you and welcome to our seven uh, attendees, members of the public that are with us at this point. Uh, just a couple of housekeeping things before I turn it over to Talitha. Uh, for those of you who haven't used, uh, participated in a virtual public meeting through the system before, uh, the opportunity to ask questions will be open for you at any point during the meeting. And that can be done through the Q&A function on the right hand side of your screen for those of you that are participating virtually. Um, you may enter your question or comment at any time during the presentation and following the presentation, we'll, uh, we'll address those questions uh, in the order in which we receive them. You may also use the chat function um, to communicate with everybody that's in the meeting. Um, you, may, you can also direct uh, chat to a particular person like the host, myself, or the presenter. Um, if you needed to communicate something like, please slow down, or it's going too fast or something of that nature. Um, and also just to say we are recording this meeting. So the, the full meeting, including the presentation and Q&A session will be uh, posted to the CVRD website um, following uh, the meeting. And I think with that, uh, we've covered, I think I've covered everything off and I'm happy to pass uh, the mic over to Talitha Soldera. Thank you very much, Chris. I... Oh, one more thing. Sorry, Talitha. If I can just ask our, sorry, our, our panelists, uh, just if everybody can keep their uh, microphone off uh, during the presentation, that would be great. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. And uh, welcome to our board members and especially to the members of the public who have joined us today. I'm, I'm excited to see that there are some, uh, some of you who are keen because this is our first virtual budget public meetings. So um, without further ado, I'm going to share my screen with you. I have a brief presentation, probably about 20 minutes, uh, and then we'll have lots of opportunity for any questions that you may have um, of the elected officials who are here to help out today um, or of myself. So just one minute while I share my screen. And I hope you can all see that. And so today, thank you. Welcome to our 2021 budget overview. As I'm sure most of you are aware, the Cowichan Valley Regional District has four municipalities and nine electoral areas. And for 2021, we have 178 services that we provide. There are a number of competing challenges and expectations that the board must balance when setting the 2021 budget, including how to meet the needs of the public under increasing financial constraints, 
increased downloading from other levels of government, resulting in increasing pressure to provide additional services, aging infrastructure and increasing construction costs that exceed the consumer price inflation, legislation changes and higher requirements for standards of care that put increasing cost pressures on existing services, increasing non-controllable expenditures such as hydro and insurance. And all of these must be weighed and balanced when the board deliberates on the budget. At the CBRD, we provide a variety of services to different partners, and therefore the impact of our budgeting process on each electoral area or municipality is different. For example, the cost for the average home in electoral area A, which participates in 40 functions, is $1,320.73. But area A also has five specified areas, encompassing a variety of services, such as street lighting, drainage, and fire protection. To complicate matters, some services are provided directly by the CVRD, others in partnership with other organizations, and some take the form of grants to organizations that provide services to the area. The CVRD does not provide education, sidewalks, curbs, edders, roads, policing, healthcare, or highways. These are all either provided by the province or in some cases provided by municipalities, not in rural areas, but in municipal areas. For most of our services, taxation is allocated based on assessed value. Each member municipality and electoral area's share is calculated based on assessed values that are provided by BC Assessment. And within this, the distribution between the property classes is determined using a fixed ratio that's mandated under provincial legislation. Requisition or property taxation, which we refer to as requisition in the regional district, it represent, represented almost 43% of total revenue for 2020. The funding for each service is determined in the establishment bylaw for that service. And with so many services, there's a wide variety of funding mixes used. We can, however, broadly categorize the main types of service funding as regional, electoral area, sub-regional, and specified area. Regional services are funded based on assessment for all 13 jurisdictions within the regional district, and are typically services that benefit the entire region, such as solid waste management or emergency 911. Electoral area services are specific to the rural areas only, and are therefore shared by all participating electoral areas on an assessment basis with no municipal funding participation. An example of this would be community planning, where the CVRD performs this function in the electoral areas, but not in the municipalities. The X on our little chart here indicates that the entire area participates, while the O is just a portion of that area. And this chart is available on the CVRD website. Many of our services are sub-regional in nature, in that they provide a service for certain areas within the CVRD, and funding is shared by those participating partners, normally on an assessment basis. An example of this in this area would be the Cary Park Recreation Service. Specified areas are set up to fund services that are provided to a number of properties that do not represent the entire electoral area and are different in that these functions are established in response to a petition by property owners to provide the service. A service area is established to encompass, encompass excuse me, the properties that receive the service, such as, in, as the case with our fire services. Now, while taxation or requisition is a major component of the CVRD's revenue base, CVRD has a few other revenue streams. Non-taxation revenue streams that are considered as part of our budget process include user fees and charges, which are used for things like uh, curbside garbage and recycling pickup and utilities. We have permits and licensing fees, such as building permits and subdivision fees. We have reserve funds, and so with these, the CVRD accumulates operating reserves to protect against variances and unexpected expenditures from year to year, and capital reserves for our long-term asset management needs. We also have grants, so wherever possible, projects are funded through the use of grant funding. And we have proceeds from borrowing. Borrowing in the CVRD can only be used for capital purposes, not for operating, so capital meaning uh, a major item. The CVRD has in recent years taken advantage of low interest rates to borrow short-term in order to fund capital purchases, 
but we also borrow long term for larger, longer term capital projects. As, men as mentioned, there are a few functions that are funded other than by requisition, and these include the community health network, the municipal MFA debt function, our curbside garbage and recycling services, as mentioned previously, sewer services, water services, some of our street lighting, and some of our drainage services. The current budget approach is incremental, meaning that current activities and staffing levels are considered as core and used as a baseline for the upcoming budget. This approach uses core expenditures on the, as the basis for the preparation of the draft budget with requests to changes to, to existing service levels being treated as supplemental requests to the commissions and committees for their consideration. Core expenditures are defined as those that are required to maintain the current levels of staffing, service, and capital, including reallocations of resources within operational budgets that do not require an increase to the requisition. Supplemental requests for the purposes of budgeting are defined as items that are additions to current staffing and or service levels, and any capital that requires an increase to the requisition or user fees. This includes purchase or construction of new capital, the addition of full or part-time staffing positions, and changes to programs or services requiring increases to user fees or requisition. Staff was directed to target a 0% requisition increase for 2021. In some services, such as solid waste and the Vancouver Island Regional Library, this was not possible due to existing service contracts, and an exemption was provided from the 0% mandate for these services. Any increases above the 0% would require a business case for the board to consider before approving the increases. So, so far, we've actually had a few budget meetings up, uh, in 2020, and at those, the committee considered some supplemental requests. After each meeting, the CVRD budget web website was updated to reflect the decisions that were made. And with all the decisions that have been made to date, uh, the budget includes a requisition increase of 1.95%. The remaining supplemental requests will be considered at the next uh, public, or sorry, the next budget meeting, uh, which is a special meeting on January 13th. And if all of these supplemental requests are approved, the requisition increase would total 2.31% for the year. So the board would then hold a meeting on uh, January 25th, is, is our last scheduled budget meeting, January 25th and 26th, to review all of the decisions that have been made and propose any further changes to the budget before the financial plan is brought forward in February. The increase to the requisition is discussed as a total number, we say 1.95%. However, as mentioned previously, the effects on individual properties varies based on a number of factors, including property assessment and property location. Only the participants in the service area contribute to the cost of providing the services. So this slide here shows the impact on each municipality and electoral area of the proposed 2021 budget, as well as the impact if all the supplemental requests and business cases were approved. And just as a, as a small disclaimer, this all of the budget information presented today is based on the 2020 revised assessment rule as the 2021 rule, uh, the revised rule will not be issued until the end of March and the completed rule just came out just the other day, so we haven't had time to update any numbers yet. So this is using the 2020 assessments. So in electoral areas A, B, and C, who we're here to talk about at this time, uh, the largest changes to the requisition for the year are for the solid waste function, followed by an increase to the regional parkland acquisition function, uh, and the next largest increase is to Cary Park Recreation. These increases are somewhat offset by a decrease in the electoral area services budget. In electoral area A, uh, this slide here shows that the average home would see an increase of $25.21. And so this chart is available on our website and it shows how the requisition is broken down by each function and shows the increases and decreases. And there is one for every jurisdiction. So in electoral area B, the average home would see an increase of $27.85. And in area C, it would be an increase of $14.26. More information about the changes and about our budget can be found on the CVRD website. And I'll just walk you through a little bit of the information that we have available on our website. So we have a number of detailed schedules 
uh, provide total budget information as well as detailed fin financial information for each of our services. The majority of the schedules look at changes in property taxation, but parcel tax information and some user fee information is provided in separate schedules. So our Schedule A, and I know it's small, but uh, much more easy to see on the website when you're looking in detail. Our Schedule A is called Changes in Tax Requisition, and it only shows the services that have a change. It details the amount of the change for that service. Down at the bottom is the total difference between general tax requisition for 2020 and that for 2021. And this does not include the change for local area services, which affect only the specifically defined areas. Schedule B shows the change in tax requisition by jurisdiction. The change due to jurisdiction column reflects the, the increase in the library requisition. And also down at the bottom of this schedule, you can see the increase in the local area service taxes, such as our fire services. Our Schedule C shows the change in requisition going as far back as 2014. And as you can see, the proposed requisition increase for 2021 even at the 2.31, if all of the other supplemental items are approved, is still less than it's been since 2014. Schedule D is a longer schedule. It has a page for each of the 13 jurisdictions. It only lists the services that each area participates in and shows the change for that service. Down at the bottom of the schedule, it shows the local area service taxes that are applicable to some properties within that jurisdiction and the changes in those taxes as well. And Schedule E, which we looked at a little bit earlier, also has a page for each jurisdiction and shows the impact for an average home in the area. Our Schedule F is our summary of short and long-term debt. And we have not yet updated our, our website yet because we're just in the middle of completing our year end. And so we haven't actually um, gotten all of the debt recorded and, and written and the schedule updated. So this will be updated in the very near future and we'll have all of the debt that we undertook in 2020, which was actually not very many uh, new debt, but they will show up on the schedule very shortly before the end of January. That is also true of Schedule G. We have not yet updated it for 2020 because we're in the middle of completing our year-end processes. There's a number of projects which we are just in the middle of putting the last of our expenses in. Um, those that are funded from reserve will not be funded until we know exactly how much money to move over. And so the schedule will be updated before the end of the month as our year-end processes continue. Schedule G has a capital reserve and an operating reserve. And so our operating reserve portion, the same as the capital, has not yet been updated as we work on finishing our year-end processes. And our Schedule H shows the assessment for the last three years. As I mentioned earlier, the 2021 uh, completed rule was just issued the other day. And so we have not yet updated the numbers, but the 2020 revised rule is what we're currently using for calculation of our budget numbers. The revised rule is updated each year by March 31st. Schedule I shows how the requisition for each area is split between the property classes. So you can see in area A, residential properties pay 84.5% of the total requisition for area A, and businesses pay 13.43%. This There is again a schedule for each one of the jurisdictions. Our Schedule J shows the cost for a $100,000 home and shows the portion of total assessment represented by each area within the region. As I mentioned previously, our parcel taxes and user fees are in separate schedules. So our parcel taxes for the sewer and water systems are shown on Schedule K and our user fees are shown on Schedule L. So it's an important to note that uh, they do show some fairly substantial increases. However, this doesn't necessarily mean an increase for the property owner. In many cases, new properties have been added to the service area. And as a new property comes on, it increases the total amount of revenue collected without increasing the cost to individual properties. This schedule shows the total amount collected, not the cost per individual property. And so those are our detailed budget schedules. We also have more specific information of it uh, available with respect to every service that we offer. For each service, there's a summary sheet 
it gives you a brief description of the service. It lists the amount that we're pro proposing requisitioning for 2021, the maximum amount that may be requisitioned if applicable, and shows the split up between the participating areas. This is followed by the five year financial plan for that particular function. And then lastly is actually the, the whole budget detail from our accounting software showing the actual expenses from 2018 and 2019, the budget for 2020 and the proposed budget for 2021. And all of this information is available on our website to provide you with as much information as possible. And so that is the brief description of our 2021 budget, where we're at and what we will be doing, uh, what we're proposing going forward with for the rest of the year. And so now I would be happy to take any questions. Thank you, Talitha. So I, I see that uh, we don't have any questions come in from our attendees via the Q&A, but since we have such a small uh, intimate number uh, here, I'm actually going to go through the list and uh, and just one by one, just unmute uh, our participants and just ask them if they if they want to pose a question or provide a comment uh, to us while they're here. Well, I'm going to start with uh, with Brenda Dawn. Brenda, I've unmuted you. Do you have any questions or comments that you want to share? Yes, I do, and I want to thank you all of you for doing this. This is a wonderful presentation, Salitha. Um, it was excellent information. Um, and it's really nice to be able to sit at home and do this as well. I have a couple of items, but I don't want to be greedy. I'll just pick on one in particular. Uh, I was reviewing the economic development budget, and I noticed that there's a lot of the funds go to tour, sports tourism. Um, and then 20,000, sorry, 30,000 goes for agricultural and 20,000 goes to film. Uh, with 90,000 going to sports tourism. Uh, is, I, I just want to question the purpose of economic development. I would like to think that this 400 and something thousand dollars is being used to bring jobs in that are not tourism related. After being hit with COVID, I mean, we're all feeling the effects of COVID and, and tourism jobs, which are not high paying jobs anyway. Uh, is there going to be something in the future to redirect this funding? to bring in a different type of job? Thank you, Brenda, for that question. I'm going to, I believe that question, Brian, did you, did you want to field that first? Yeah, sure, you betcha. Thank you for the question. And, uh, you know, that's often a question that we get from the public around the economic development function. And, and uh, you know, people question, uh, you know, the benefits and, and uh, the actual outputs of the economic development function. But I can I can assure you that uh, behind the scenes, um, you know, there's there's a lot going on in terms of uh, our economic development department uh, uh, connecting uh, potential business uh, with uh, potential partners in the community, with potential funding opportunities, with potential land matches, uh, those sorts of things. So, um, you know, the tourism does play a, play a fair, fairly major role in our local economy, but uh, uh, agriculture does as well. Um, I know that uh, our economic development department is working very closely on, on projects that will enhance agricultural capacity, which will not only help um, uh, the economy in terms of, of jobs and, and uh, income, but also ensuring uh, food security for our region. Uh, they work very closely with our post-secondary education uh, institutions around training, uh, particularly in areas like technology. Um, so they have their, their hands in a number of sectors and in the economy and are um, working hard to, to connect people, to uh, apply for grant funding that will allow us to, to undertake different initiatives. Um, the industrial land strategy is a recent example of, of the kind of work that economic development has been doing to ensure that we have uh, sufficient industrial lands in our region to be able to support uh, industrial growth and, and commercial growth. So uh, economic development is a very broad um, uh, endeavor. And, uh, and and although tourism uh, often will, will seem to be a, a fairly high profile aspect of it, uh, there's lots of other aspects uh, in, going on in the background. Thanks, Brian. Do any of our other panelists, uh, notably the elected officials, want to uh, provide comment on that question before I move on to the next question? 
Seeing no hands, okay. Sorry, before I move on to uh, to rent to select our next participant, I do see we have a question coming through the Q&A from Donna Einerson. Apologies if I'm not pronouncing that correctly. Donna asks, how was the COVID-19 recovery benefit used and where will this information appear? Is that another uh, question for our CA, CIO to take? Or oh, I see our I see our CFO Natalie is. Uh, uh, thank you for the question. That's a question that's asked frequently lately. There was nine hundred three thousand dollars received by the CBRD for COVID restart funds, and a report was taken to the board back in December. And from that report, the board allocated six hundred thousand dollars up to the end of December to be utilized towards refunds and lost revenue for our recreation facilities, as well as for cost um, for things to restart our facilities, like the plexiglass, those type of things, and other expenses that were related to the COVID. They will then put $300,000 into a reserve, which will be reviewed um, and brought back to the board on how it will be expended. Thanks, Natalie. Is there anyone else who wants to chime in on that one? I'm seeing no hands. Okay, moving down the list here, uh, I'm going to unmute Christy. Christy, is there a question or comment you want to provide? Not really. Thanks. We've been we've enjoyed the presentations. First time we sat in, try to find out a little bit more about where we we live, um, and probably not the meeting that that uh, we're looking for. Because the only expenses we're at the moment curious about are, are about four stop signs and, and how we go about talking to people about stop signs. Well, thank you very much for uh, for joining us today. I hope you I hope you learned a little bit uh, about the area that you that you live in now. Uh, let's uh, let's move on to Cliff, and I can only imagine that this is Cliff Evans from Shawnigan Lake. Am I correct? Are you there, Cliff? Uh, yes, I am. And uh, the question I have has to do with solid waste. I noticed that there was an increase, and I just forget which way it goes right now, but there was two two increases in a row. One was for 75,000, and another was for 125,000. And they were for consultants and for legal services. Uh, how come we're getting this increase? We've never had that before. Thanks for the question, Cliff. Any one of our staff members want to? Mr. Carruthers. Yeah, I would have to refer to our staff, Mr. Evans, for, for a, a detailed explanation of that. <clears throat> um, often when we're um, Putting our budgets together, we're anticipating uh, what costs may be coming in the coming year, and uh, I don't have the specifics on that, but there there would be uh, a rationale, whether it's either because we incurred increased costs last year or because there's something coming in the future that uh, that we need to be uh, cognizant of. All right, thank you, Brian. Uh, going back to our list. Next up is uh, David Slade. David, do you have a question or comment? Um, yes, I do. Thank you so much for uh, for providing this forum. Um, I guess I've got uh, two questions. Um, one would be, how do citizens get their concerns and their um, questions into the public record and get them um, to, into the place where they would be considered during budget deliberations? Uh, by staff and uh, regional directors. Do you want to do you want to ask your second question as well? Yeah. Okay. The second question would be um, around. I have a concern around the uh, regional parkland acquisition fund, and uh, and I would say the the lack of support for it. I believe that in two thousand eight, the referendum approved um, for up to. Uh, $5 per $100,000 in property value. Um, 
And I think that in 2013, that, that limit was actually raised to about $7, which I believe in today's tax um, regime would raise uh, in the range of $1.4 million, which of course would go a long ways to actually purchasing park land and protecting areas. Um, and, and I think that the funding that has been uh, allocated it, I think I believe it was um, it was only $150,000 in 2019, and I think 250 in 2020. And I I missed the proposal for this year, but I think it might have been might have been up to 400,000. But but I consider that to be grossly underfunding parks acquisition, particularly when a referendum overwhelmingly gave support to the CVRD to the taxes at the amount that was approved. Um, in a time when uh, we see species extinctions, we see biodiversity loss, we see um, climate change advancing on us, I think that parks and protected areas are, are of critical importance. And I think that this is a position where the CVRD can provide the leadership to, to create and protect those places and the opportunities for, for recreation, for human health, for for um, ecosystem health and even for tourism, ecotourism job opportunities, I think is being, I think we're, we're letting opportunity pass us by, uh, particularly in view of the support that this, this referendum, this service got from the taxpayers. Thank you, David. Uh, so, I'll take a quick stab at, at answering the first question you had and to say that this uh, evening uh, right now is one of the opportunities that you have to provide that input uh, to the staff and particularly to the elected officials who are going to be approving the budget. So we have a number of them uh, here hearing this today. Uh, we also have an uh, opportunity that's been open uh, through PlaySpeak since um, since October to uh, to answer questions and provide comments uh, and a number of discussion opportunities on there uh, and is still open and we encourage uh, any residents to go on there and provide uh, provide comment uh, and participate in the questionnaire. And thirdly, and uh, Talitha, correct me if I'm wrong, but residents can also send direct comments to yourself. Uh, via email uh, at any time um, to provide input on the budget, which will go into a, uh, a feedback report that will be presented to uh, to committee uh, in, at the end of this month, I believe. Uh, and oh, go. Ahead. I was just going to say you're exactly right, Chris. Uh, and also because all of our budget meetings are public meetings, there's also the regular opportunities for providing input. Uh, and asking questions before and uh, at the end of meetings, at the end of the public meetings. So on our on our website uh, in the finance section under the draft 2021 budget, uh, you'll see a list of all the relevant meetings which uh, which have budget budget considerations or deliberations on them. Um, if you want to familiarize yourself with that to know when that next opportunity is. Um, Going to your second question, I am not going to attempt to make any comment on that, and we'll uh, and we'll look to uh, any of our directors here who may want to uh, speak on that. Or is everybody satisfied that uh, they've heard Mr. Mr. Slade's comments? Seeing no nobody waving or turning their video on. All right, thank you very much uh, for that, David. I'm going to move on now to. Uh, Jerry Stura. Uh Jerry, do you want to ask a question or provide a comment? I have no questions. Uh, both, not entirely devoid of complexity, this whole exercise. But I would like to commend you on holding the line on tax increases. I'm very pleased to see that uh, the tax, tax increases are being held to a, a bare minimum. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, going down the list, Kate yes, Stegall. Yes, just there's a question in the queue in the queue as well. Just in the Q and A. Sorry, just if you didn't see it. Oh, I'm seeing that now. Uh, I believe it's been answered in the. Oh, sorry, I'm looking at the chat. I'm sorry. The another question coming from Brenda Don. 
Can parkland acquisition funds be used to purchase land as trails to link communities? And so I can take that. Uh, parkland acquisition funds are used for the purchase of land only. They can't be used for actually making the trail, just for buying the land. And so um, I hope that helps answer your question. Director Morrison and then Director Wilson. Oh, you're muted. You're muted, Director Morrison. My little button on my headphone didn't want to work. Uh, yeah, and and for those that weren't around when when that uh, referendum process went through in in 2008, the the community came together and and through a, a series of uh, very well attended meetings and dot democracies with maps and the likes. Uh, there is a, a, a target list of of properties that were uh, identified and and the opportunity for uh, for you know other significant properties of either ecological or or other values could could be considered. But there is there is a shopping list of identified properties and and at the time the the uh, linear trails weren't necessarily considered a, as a as a regional parkland initiative uh, and, and the Trans Canada Trail and the likes were, were handled separately. So just for clarification purposes, we can provide the information, a document that shows that we, we actually do have a list of targeted properties that, uh, that were approved when the referendum and the funding were approved. Thanks, Director Morrison. Director Wilson? Yeah, that's an interesting uh, question there about the um, the pr purchase of land for trails. Um, uh, I, I was un unaware of that particular one, uh, and that seems to be something which is coming to the forefront more and more often there with people asking for linkages of trails um, from one area to another. And this is something that I um, am, am more than in favour of if we can link various places to other places and use that parkland acquisition to actually give walking trails or even cycling trails to various places. Um, so thank you for that, Talitha. It's, um, it's, a, it's something, an aspect that I was unaware of. Thanks, Director Wilson. Um, now, sorry, uh, Kate Siegel, are, are you there? And do you have a question or comment? Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Um, I guess I have two questions. One, like I'm pretty new, uh, so just trying to get a feel for how, you know, this whole tax thing works, but I'm wondering, I'm in area A, so um, the, I guess the tax base of area A, how much of that money stays in our, you know, South community um, and, and how much is spread throughout the rest. I recognize that I'm going to support, you know, like the aquatic center and other things, um, but I guess just a generalization. I'm wondering about that. And my second question is on the topic of parkland as well, but not necessarily acquisition. I've heard kind of through a number of people that at least in area A, there are actually properties that are already acquired but no development has happened in terms of um, like playgrounds. Um, and I think there's some kind of requirement. We're supposed to have a playground within a certain diameter, you know, around the area. So I'm wondering if there's money going towards that parkland development rather than the acquisition. Thanks. Thank you, Kate. Uh, I think Talitha will uh, be able to answer the first question. So I uh, I can't do the math that quickly on the fly, but um, the majority of, so in each electoral area, the taxpayers are only charged for the services in which they participate. And so um, while there are some regional services in electoral area A, and I'm just scanning through that little chart that I showed you a little bit earlier, um, the majority of the services of electoral area A uh, are electoral area A related or have almost no increase for the year. So um, there are some regional services, some electoral area services, um, but all the taxes that are paid within electoral area A are for services that residents of electoral area A participate in. 
Thanks, Talitha. Brian, uh, you want to take a crack at the second question? Sure, I'll take a crack at the second question. So thanks, thanks for the question. And yeah, we have numerous uh, properties throughout the regional district that that are considered park that aren't developed. Uh, many of those are required through uh, subdivision uh, processes, and and in many cases, those properties are left as as green space or buffers for for development. Um, but as we acquire those properties, we work with the local parks commissions to try and ensure that we get properties of the of the highest value uh, to us as a park that will benefit the residents. Uh, we don't have a requirement uh, that that uh, states how uh, how close we have playgrounds to uh, populated areas, uh, but we generally will leave that to the local parks commissions to uh, make recommendations around where parks should be developed. Um, you know, parks are very expensive to maintain. Uh, they're very expensive to develop, and so most of the electoral areas are are cognizant of that and and uh, are very strategic in terms of of where and and when they develop their parks. So, um, I would recommend that you. Uh, it's a little challenging and. COVID times, but uh, get engaged with the uh, with your local parks commission, and uh, and have those conversations with the commission and your area director. Thanks, Brian. Speaking of the area director, uh, Director Salmon, do you want to uh, do you want to field some of that? You just need to unmute you're, yourself. You're muted, please. There we go. Sorry. So, yeah, thanks, Kate. There, there's a community uh, parks and trails master plan just for area A that is available online, or I can get you a hard copy if you like, um, which I think answers that question or at least gives the policy behind it about uh, how close the playground should be. Um, but, yeah, we can. Uh, we can talk about uh, more details if you want to come to Parks Commission meetings. I know you're on the APC, but the second Thursday is the Parks Commission, so we're always welcome to have uh, guests at that as well. Thanks, Director Simon. Any of our other uh, directors want to speak to that? Seeing no hands. We'll go. I believe there was one more participant that we had yet to hear from, and that is Michelle. Michelle, do you have a question or comment? Not because I was trying to be quiet, just because I wanted to, I wanted to do that for the sake of reasons. Mich Michelle, are you there? Sorry. I, I can. I can hear you. I can hear somebody talking there. Uh, did you have a question or a comment? No, sorry, for some reason, my my mic just jumped off of mute and I'm not sure why. My battery's dying, so maybe that's why. And this, of course, Michelle is Mayor Michelle Staples of the city of Duncan. <laughs> Who? Thank you, Michelle. Right now. <laughs> Let me, uh, oh, I see another question has come in. Oh, Director Morrison, did you want to? Say something before we take the next question. Uh, I, hang on. I was just going to ask: Is the uh, is the caller who'd asked the question about economic development still with us? I believe so. I don't think we've lost any of our uh, of our attendees. Yeah, I think she is. It's uh, Brenda Don asked the question on Dev. I think it was. Or, oh, great. So, so if I could, I, you know, I think she asked a, a very probing and interesting question, and I think that there's there's some merit in her having a chat with somebody like like Barry or or John, because, uh, you know, we 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 uh, target funds or direct funds through the uh, the tourism couch, and that is is you know specified to that sort of activity. And sport tourism, well, sort of in a hiatus now, uh, those dollars aren't likely to be expended. But our economic development staff have some really good, uh, you know, base work on on what their marching orders are. And currently, they are looking at improving the, you know, the economic circumstances for our area with uh, a significant efforts in areas like broadband and 
and the likes. And, you know, when I first started the, the with the regional district, you know, economic development was was essentially chasing factories and smokestacks. And it's such a more complex and evolved uh, industry now. And, and I think our, our folks are doing a really good job of it. So it would be a, a really good idea if you've got concerns about where dollars are being focused. Um, our staff uh, would be able to give you a really good idea of what their what their targets and what investments that we're making on the uh, economic development front. But obviously, with with COVID, uh, sport tourism is is has to be on hiatus due to the nature of it, and uh, and so those funds are being held back. And uh, you know, until the the organizations that are putting events on can prove that they can actually put on the events. Thanks. Thanks, Director Morrison. Uh, we had a question that was posed in our in our Q and A, and I'm just gonna and it was answered by Talitha in the Q and A, but I'm gonna read it out for people who might be watching this after the fact. And that question was, how much money is in the Regional Parkland Acquisition Fund currently? And the answer is approximately 2.1 million dollars. Uh, the last question to come in was, has economic development? Oh, sorry, I'm. There, Donna has asked a couple of questions. I need to go back one here. Uh, land match funds from economic development function seems to be ongoing. Sorry, I'm getting pop-ups and I can't see the rest of it. There we go. Land match funds from economic development function seem to be ongoing. How many successful land matches were there in 2020? Is that a question, Talitha, that, uh, that you have the answer to? I don't think so. So uh, if I may, this uh, very detailed information is exactly the kind of information that our economic development department can um, provide. They are the experts on that and, and they would have that detailed information. So it was recommended uh, for a discussion with economic development and that would be my recommendation as well. And I'm thinking that uh, that Donna's other question about um attracting new business to the valley is something that would probably be best answered directly by uh, the manager of economic development as well. Um, quickly, uh, since we have the time, I'm just going to quickly run back, uh, run back through our list here um, and see if anybody wanted to pose another question. Christy, do you want another opportunity for a question or comment? Um, no, that's fine. Thank you. Okay. Chris, if I could just um, add, just today I was looking at the new assessment information and noticed that Area B alone had 12 new businesses for 2021 um, on the assessment rolls. So I'm not sure about economic development's role in attracting those businesses, but just a, a, stat, a statistic to help answer some of that question. Chris, I just posted the contact information for economic development on the uh, on the chat board. Thank you, Ryan. Mr. Cliff Evans from Shawnigan Lake, do you want to ask another question or pose a comment? Uh, I don't have another question right now. I guess I have piles of them, but I, should, I have nothing really to ask now, but I, I want to thank you for putting this on tonight and it seems to be running better than our normal public meetings meetings. So you're, you have kudos for me for putting this on. Thank you, Cliff. Mr. David Slade, do you have a question or comment? Yeah, I guess I would just like uh, follow up on my on my parks concern. When I look at the uh, the amount of um, user um, activity at parks like. Cobble Hill Mountain Park, where even in the park and ride parking, the horse parking, everything is full. Even I was there yesterday and the, when the weather was nice, I was there today around 11 o'clock and there's virtually no parking spots left in the entire area. The, the park, and then if you look at Zuhalem, they've got the same situation. The parks that we have are being so heavily utilized that we just, we absolutely need more space for people to recreate in the wild. And when we're in the middle of an acknowledged um, climate crisis, we uh, we really should be doing everything as individuals and as local and senior government to preserve and protect all of the wild places that we possibly can. And I think the Parks Acquisition Fund is an excellent instrument with which to do that. 
and would serve the, the greater good locally and globally. Thanks, David. Donna, do you have a question or comment? I see you, you okay. You, um, not really, but I do commend you for, uh, all of you for um, putting all this work in to uh, include the uh, citizens of the Valley. Thank you. Thank you for that. Jerry, do you want to ask another question or provide another comment? Yes, I'm good. I have no questions. Thank you. Thank you. Kate, would you like to ask another question? No, I'm good. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Well, Chris, may I interrupt just for a second? Of course. A question that came from somebody Telegraph. I'm trying to figure out the chat thing. I'm not sure if I got it in there or not. Um, which part of Telegraph Road she lives on, and that would be, of course, the Ministry of Transportation. And I was trying to let her know um, who that was. So that's Tina Rogers, Ministry of Transportation. So if she's in the Area D Telegraph Road or Area C, I believe both of them are still Tina Rogers from Ministry of Transportation. Thank you, Director Yannardo. Director Wilson? Yeah, thank you, Chris. Uh, yeah, that's correct. Um, Tina is the um, is the representative for the MOTI. Uh, with regards to the resident who asked the question about stop signs, et cetera, um, th this has been an ongoing thing and it is MOTI as well who I've been working with, but if he would like to give me a call um, at uh, my CVRD number, which he can find on the website, I'm more than happy to talk to him um, about that and what's happening with that as well. Thanks, Director Wilson. Uh, I just want to acknowledge that uh, that Director Stone or Chair Stone, I should say, uh, joined us late he, uh, in this meeting and he wanted to thank everyone uh, for attending. Director Stone, did you want to come on camera to to say anything uh, before we conclude the meeting? I'm sorry, I'm have I don't know. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Sorry, I'm losing you folks, so I'm kind of minimizing video. Um, my bandwidth is a bit of an issue tonight after I complain about others' bandwidth sometimes. Um, but uh, no, I just wanted to to thank everybody. Um, I, I in hearing some of the questions, I missed the presentation, but um, I think there's a lot of good information that we can provide to people. Hopefully, they they do watch our regular meetings, especially the budget meetings, because some of these discussions that I've uh, of the questions that I've heard are often answered through that dialogue at our regular uh, board and committee meetings, especially the corporate services committee uh, budget meetings right now. So if uh, I would just encourage people to either review those, just even if you check the agenda, if you see like uh, Mr. Slade with the regional parkland acquisition, those types of issues, um, those discussions that go on at, uh, at the board can be very illuminating and go a little bit deeper than these budget meetings into the particular issues. And also around economic development, I just wanted to comment that uh, we've had a, an amazing success working with uh, Ms. Melmock before and Mr. O'Reardon now in developing our economic development strategy. Um, I can give a couple of quick examples. We've retained a, a new $8 million uh, office supply distribution facility and head office. Um, a small company that grew here uh, through working with uh, Mr. O'Reardon and uh, on our overall economic development strategy. We were able to keep them here and convince them to stay here in the valley, um, as well as uh, several new um, businesses. And also, um, just looking over the last few years, the vacancy rate of our existing commercial buildings has gone from um, 30% in 2014 in the northern part of the region here uh, to effectively 0% as of 2020. Um, so it does work. Um, it's not always easy to quantify um, directly um, because it's sometimes private information from different businesses. Um, we also have two large, depends on your perspective on it, but cannabis uh, facilities, research and development facilities um, that are just under construction here right now. Um, and that was, again, part of our economic development strategy. So there are many examples, and and I know working with Mr. O'Reardon, he can provide those examples, and I can, can help provide that information as well. 
Thank you, Chair Stone. Director Wilson? Yeah, I'm sorry, I, I meant to mention this last time, given the amount of interest that's been shown in, in the economic development function, I'm just wondering whether it would be possible to include Mr. O'Riordan in these meetings, um, perhaps going forward, perhaps not this evening, of course, but in the, uh, the follow-up ones later on this uh, next week. Thanks, Director Wilson. I think we can take that into uh, consideration. Director McGonagall. Thank you. Can you hear me? Uh, I think with the discussion that we've heard on the Parkland acquisition and, and some of the discussion that we've had as directors earlier on on this particular function that uh, a look at this Parkland uh, acquisition fund as a check-in is in order in the very near future. And I know we've discussed this uh, in the past as, as uh, to looking at uh, the initial intent and those properties that were identified and perhaps looking at other opportunities that have come forward either through public discussion or uh, various directors who have identified other properties that might fit within that parkland acquisition. So it, it's an interesting concept when you look at the numbers that are being utilized, especially during COVID, people looking for something to do besides going from the kitchen table to the couch in the living room. They want to get out and, and, and recreate safely. And, and that's an opportunity within that uh, natural environment to do that. So I look forward to those discussions and, and how that can be um, revamped perhaps and uh, re-initiated and reinvigorated. Thank you. Thank you, Director McGonagall. Uh, does it, do any other any of our other directors uh, want to provide any uh, further comments before we conclude this first of our virtual budget public meetings? I see no hands. So thank you very much to uh, our residents who tuned into this and provided uh, some great comments and questions. Thanks to all of our elected officials for their time uh, and. Uh, again, this video will be posted to uh, the CVRD website uh, for residents who are unable to attend to view it at a later date. So thank you, everyone. We'll see some of you again for the next meeting this evening. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Good night. See you soon.